you recently signed on to a letter uh, decrying cancel culture. Uh, now, a lot of people have different uh, ideas about what cancel culture is and what you meant and everybody else meant uh, by signing that uh, letter. So uh, I wanted to ask you directly, uh, what was your sense of what that letter was trying to accomplish and why did you sign it? First of all, the letter didn't talk about cancel culture, didn't mention it. Uh, there is a cancel culture, which the letter didn't discuss. If I'd written it, I would have discussed it. There's overwhelming resort to cancel culture on the part of the mainstream establishment. It's their bread and butter. I can give you plenty of examples from my own experience, ranging from being cut off at the last second from talking on NPR because an executive didn't want me to be on, to uh, closing an entire publisher and destroying all its uh, stock because they didn't, an executive didn't want a book of mine to distribute and plenty more in between. And uh, for me, it's minor. Uh, for others, it's much worse. That's just constant. What I understood the letter to be about is kind of a anodyne comment in favor of freedom of expression aimed at telling small segments of the left that they're making a mistake both in principle and tactically if they adopt the principles of the mainstream. They're making a mistake. And I tell them directly. So if you want to, if you don't like uh, Charles Murray giving a talk, the wrong way to deal with it is to break up his meeting. It's wrong in principle and it's a gift to the far right and to him. The right way to deal with it is to set up a counter uh, meeting in which you talk about what he's saying, use it as an educational opportunity, uh, everyone gains from it. If you break up the meeting, you're saying, you're giving the right wing an opportunity to say, we're the good guys, we have to protect ourselves against these thugs over there. So giving them a gift is tactically wrong and principled wrong. And there are good ways to approach it. Uh, that it's a very minor thing. You know, I say it all the time to people on the left. I see nothing wrong with signing a letter that says we should defend free speech. So, uh, Professor Chomsky, let's give an example here. Um, uh, I interviewed David Duke back in 2015 because uh, Trump was rising and he was a big supporter of Trump. And I wanted to see what form of discrimination he cares most about. And I thought it was informative because uh, I thought he was going to say against Latinos or Muslims or or African Americans, but he didn't. He mainly focused on Jews, and 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 then we saw in the Trump administration there was attacks on synagogues, there was Charlottesville. So I thought that was a tell telling interview. But there are many who say no, you should not do that. That's platforming David Duke and allowing him to spread his ideas to more people. How would you respond to that? That's a different question. Uh, universities, uh, other institutions have no responsibility to invite everyone. Okay, absolutely not. That's not even a question. They have no responsibility to invite David Duke. Okay. However, if someone in the university does invite David Duke, the right response is not to give him a great gift by breaking it up and letting him look like the good guy. The right response at that point is to expose him. Have, uh, meet, have people at his meeting, if you want, raising questions. Have your own meetings where you bring up where he's coming from, what he's doing, why he's getting support from the Trump administration with their deep-seated racism and white supremacy. Bring all that out. That teaches people, organizes people, leads them to do something positive. So of course, it's harder than just getting in and shouting and screaming, but it's much more effective.